All right, everybody, welcome back to IT Security Labs. And this is another video in the Game of XG Directory series. So far, we've gotten access to a machine using Metasploit, and this is how we did it in the last video. I'll link to it in the description. But here, as you can see, we finally get a session. If we say sessions, you notice that we have a session here. I for five, we can say uh, get UID, uh, get system here. Now get UID will show us that we are anti system. So this is where we are. Our customer here, Trevor Phillips Industry, hired us to do a pen test. And they said, hey, break into any of these IP addresses. So far, we are on this 192.168.56.22 as our initial access through a web browser. And now that we have system, we need to establish persistence because just in case they kick us out of the web shell, we need somewhere else so that we can come back in. So the first thing that I will probably do that is not OPSEC safe is I'll drop into a shell. And once I drop into a shell, I can now try to see if I can first disable Defender. So one of the things that we can do is maybe run something like this here. So Windows Defender is a binary in C program files Defender, and we can remove all the definitions. These are probably what is getting us caught. So let's go and see if we can do that. And by the way, if you want some of these notes, just let me know and I'll see what I can do. All right, so as you can see, uh, anti-spyware has been disabled. This should trigger our intrusion detection system and our Elastic SIM, um, our Elastic Security should catch this. So we should go and track it down later. But for now, we disabled Defender. Another way that we could do it is to run these PowerShell commands here. So type PowerShell. Let's see if we get PowerShell in here. All right, now that we got PowerShell, Let's see if we can run those commands. So this is just disabling, in this case, intrusion prevention system. And also we're disabling real-time real monitoring and we are turning off the firewall. So we are doing everything that we should not be doing in a real uh, environment where we don't want to get caught. But we want to get caught, so we do all that stuff. Our Elastic Security Service is still running, but I think without the Windows definitions, we might be able to get by. All right, so let's also do an AMSI bypass, but I don't plan on running any more binaries in here, but uh, let's do an AMSI bus bypass, okay? Then next, let's add our backdoor user. In this case, we'll add a backdoor user just in case they kick us out of the other session, and this is our persistence. You can modify things like start, you can execute your binaries, you know, but I like to have a backdoor user. So I'm adding a backdoor user. I'm adding this user to the administrators group. I'm also adding them to the remote desktop users. And then I will make sure that they can actually access this machine remotely. So that's what all these commands are doing here. This also should get us caught. And remember, my main goal here is to, to not hide. I want to actually get caught and I want to see alerts pop up in our intrusion detection system here. That's my goal. And if alerts don't pop up, I want to know why they didn't. So let's go ahead and run those. All right, so it says it edit our user. So let's say init user. We should see a user called evil me. Okay, uh, let's get out of here. Let's get out of PowerShell. Net user. All right, here's my evil, evil me. Uh, net user evil me. Is evil me going to be part of the administrators? Yes. So we have achieved persistence. So if they kick us out of the web shell, we can come back in with our user evil me. In fact, let's go ahead and actually do an RDP as evil me to do 22. So we're saying, hey, XRDP, go to this IP address, use evil me as the user in the password of 123 and ignore the certificates. Um, allow the clipboard so I can copy and paste. Show me dynamic resolution so I can resize. Share my temp folder. That way I can share files back and forth. And you'll see why I'm doing that. And um, it doesn't like me. Uh, I think the password has, uh, oh, I see. Let me put this password in single quotes and two exclamation marks and a single quote. I think that should work. All right. So now we are seeing if we can sign in. And if this works, that means that we have RDP access to the machine. Okay, so it looks like it's working on it. As you can see, it's coming up. But while it's doing that, let's go and check our intrusion detection system. Oh my goodness, look what we did here. 
We generated in a user account creation. These are medium uh, alerts. That's okay. But we also added the user to a privileged group. So we do have a root. I mean, um, a rule that is saying, hey, if anybody's added to a privileged group, let us know. Okay, so as you can see here, the rule says it identifies the user as being added to a privileged group. This is us adding our user to the administrators group. So the rules are firing. Now we know that we can get caught. So what can we do? Well, if your goal is to not get caught, maybe don't add a user to a privileged group. Find other persistent methods like, for example, you can add your binary somewhere hidden and execute it at startup or at system reboot or even as a scheduled task. Maybe that's better, but I'm sure that those will also get caught. So this was just us experimenting, which is the purpose of this lab. Okay, now that we did that, we're in as if me. Let's just see if we can access my shared folder. Remember, the way that I accessed this was, I said, share my temp folder. So let's go ahead and check it out. If I go to this PC, I should see a share from my machine. That's how I'm going to be moving my files. There are other ways you can use Metasploit to upload files and things like that. I like this because it was faster for the OS EP, uh, but that's what we'll be doing here to move files. Let's also verify that Windows Defender is disabled. So if I go to Windows Security, Virus and Threat Protection, you see saying turn on, that means that it's off. We have everything turned off here. In this case, I want to run Sharphound immediately, a system, that way I can actually get some data. So that's what we're going to do here is we need to find Sharphound and upload it to this machine. So how do we do that? Well, we already have our share from our Kali being shared here. So if I drop Sharphound in this temp folder on my Kali Linux, it should be shared with my machine here. I can do copy paste or whatever, but I like this method better. So I'm going to come in here and I'll say file new tab, Sharphound here to such TMP. All right, and once I do that, I'll go back to my machine, refresh this. Here's my temp that's being shared. Sharpound should be somewhere here. Okay, here's my Sharpound. I'll copy that to my desktop. All right, so the way that this works is Sharpound is a collector of data that we can feed to Bloodhound, and Bloodhound can tell us relationships between things in a, in a domain network. In this case, uh, something happened to my Sharphound. <laughs> I think my Elastic Security is still chewing up my binary because it just took it away. I think it did. Let me paste it. Here's my Sharphound, right? I am sure that it, it disappeared. Okay. There, I, I, there we go. Elastic Security just prevented my Sharphound from running. My goodness. So we disabled the Defender. But we forgot that there's a third-party security tool here. In this case, it's Elastic Sim. How do we still run Sharphound? All right, so in that case, I'm just going to stop the Elastic Security service. That way, things work. So in with my newfound shell here, I can just open PowerShell ISE, run as administrator, because I'm, I am in the administrator group after all. And then I can do something like stop service Elastic Security. Oh, there we go. It's Elastic Agent with Court. It's running. Well, instead of get service, we're going to stop the service. Again, uh, this should, I mean, this should also let the defenders know, like, something is up here. Somebody's stopping our Elastic Agent. Okay, now that our Elastic Agent is stopped, let's go ahead and... Uh, get our sharp hound i'll just use the regular sharp hound here it's funny that the mounted share is not being uh, removed so maybe we could have ran it from the, our mounted share here without stopping our elastic agent but now if i paste it it should work and then i want to run it as system i mean you can run it from the other one but i like to run it since i'm already here and i can say where am i and i'm already system anti-system let me just run it from here so cd C users evil me on desktop. Okay, I can say there. I also like this better because it's not through RDP. I could have opened the terminal and run it as a system over there, but do I see my file? No. What is happening here? I thought Elastic Agent is gone. 
Did, did that thing start itself? Okay, it stopped. Somebody tell me what's going on here. I stopped the Elastic Agent. Um, Defender, I think Defender is also stopped. Okay, just to make sure. Get service Elastic Agent is stopped. It is not running. So why is it chewing up my uh, payload? I have no idea. Okay, um, let me try something here. Okay, Elastic Security. I don't know how to disable this Elastic Security without messing with too much stuff here. So go to services. Let's look for, for that elastic security service. So here's it. Okay. <laughs> There's elastic agent, which is stopped, but elastic endpoint. Elastic endpoint is still running. <laughs> so we need to stop both of them. So the reason why my sharp pound has been getting removed is because there is two of them. Uh, as an attacker, I didn't know that. I had installed this, but I, I forgot. I didn't even know that this was a thing. So I'll stop this one too. Okay. Let's go to our PowerShell and see if we can stop it. So Elastic, uh, we need to do a stop service as well. I uh, cannot be stopped. Do the following. Really? Okay. So Elastic Endpoint is here. So I'll say um, start the service. Uh, let's start Elastic Agent here and then uninstall it. Okay, so Elastic Agent is running. I'm, I'm just going to come back to my sim and say, you know what, Elastic Agent, I'm, t I'm sick of you. For now, I need to do something with you. Maybe I'll unenroll this agent for now. No, we just un unenroll it. This is something that you face, maybe something like Falcon or other EDR will be there and there'll be a pain to deal with. I don't know how to deal with this. I, I knew how to stop Elastic. I don't know how to stop the actual agent. It's a pain to deal with. And for sake of my time, I'm going to remove it. I'll put it back later. And make sure that it's removed. I'll keep asking for it. Okay. No more Elastic agent and hopefully there's no more Elastic endpoint. Bring our Sharp Hound. Right, so Sharp Hound is here. Put it on the desktop. Nobody should be taking my Sharp Hound this time. Just copy to desktop. All right, so now that we have Sharp Hound there, we can go back here and say, hey, um, CDC users evil me desktop. Here's my Sharp Hound. So I'm, I need to use Sharp Hound to collect data for my domain. Okay, so I'm going to run my Sharp Hound. First, let's collect data about the north. Uh, let's verify that it's still there, just in case. Yeah, Sharp Hound is persisting this time. Now we can run Sharp Hound for the domain north.7kingdoms.local. I want you to collect all and give me a zip file called north7kingdom.zip. Sharp Hound here will take a little bit. All right. And if you want to make sure that it's actually doing things, you should see a file up here in, in, on the desktop showing up when it's done. All right, so it looks like our North collection finished. Our one machine SID mapping, 71 names. So we did find some data. If I go to my machine here on the desktop, here's my North. So I'll copy this and just move it to my share because I already have a share that's mounted and I'm being efficient, aka lazy. I'll just paste it in here. So now it's on my Kali. And you say not the seven kingdoms. Let's do the same for Essos.local. Because we know that that's another domain as well. We're also looking for data from Essos. And we found some mappings. So with those two domains, let's go ahead and also do something cool. So we have already gathered data for Bloodhound. We need to start Bloodhound and do the ingestion of the data in Bloodhound. But we can also do something like load Kiwi. That way we can run Mimikatz and dump some credentials. So Kiwi help. Is it Kiwi help or help Kiwi? I don't know. Help Kiwi? Oh, you know, just type help. It should give us the help. Okay. First, I like to do the creds all. In this case, I only see one for the north of seven kingdoms dot local. This is uh, for the actual machine. Let's uh, retrieve 
MSV creds. We can try the Kerberos as well, but this one I have had better luck with. All right, um, sure. We have the machines NTLM hash. We have my evil me NTLM hash. Hey, we also have Rob Stacks NTLM hash that we can try to see if we can crack. We have a user vagrance NTLM hash. So we do have hashes here. The one that we'll probably use is the LSA dump creds command. So we can see if we have any LSA creds as well. This can also be achieved by uploading the actual mimic heads binary to the system. Okay, LSA dump creds is better. As you can see here, we actually see SVC SQL has a password you will not cabros me. So we do find more. So let's copy these and save them in our creds. So that's our SVC SQL. Okay, so we're armed with the machine credential creds. We also have local accounts, any domain creds, but let's ch check for running services. And in this, when we check for running services, we're looking for people who are running on the domain accounts. So in this case, I see if Me is in there running a bunch of other stuff. But Rob Stack is running on the domain, North. So if we see Rob Stack in our Bloodhound having any permissions, we might actually try to find out because Rob Stack has services that are running as Rob Stack. We can migrate to these services and run as Rob Stack and achieve whatever permissions they have. The only thing that's waiting for us here is Bloodhound. So let's go here and say Bloodhound Kali. Let's see, how do we run Bloodhound in Kali Linux? Here's some red team notes. If you haven't installed, you run up to install Bloodhound. I have already installed Bloodhound. So all I need to do is start it, but go ahead and do it up to get install. So for me to start Bloodhound, I'm just going to come back here. First, I need to start the console. So near 4 j is running. Let me type Bloodhound. No sandbox to start Bloodhound. And this will give me Bloodhound. And I sign in. No data. That's okay. Let me make sure that from my machine here, I already moved a file for North. Let me see, make sure that I move the file for the ASOS one. And I'm moving this to my shared temp folder. And paste. So now I have these two files here. They need to make it into Bloodhound. Here's my Bloodhound. So to import in my Bloodhound, I'll go up here, upload data. And I'll go to my temp. It's in other locations, computer, TMP. And in here, I have that data that we saw from my machine. I'll start with the North Seven Kingdom. This will take a second to import. It's clear finished. So here's the last one processing. All right, then let me upload another one. This time I'm going for ASOS. My temp. And this is the ASOS doma uh, domain as well. All right. So we should now have some data in here. Let's see if we can interact with it. So first I like to look at the database info. I see the, the address here are uh, sessions, there's four. Relationships, there's 36. 17 access control list. If you go to analysis, uh, first let's to find all domain admins. Give me all the domain admins. Then we can zoom in and out, see who are the domain admins. Okay, Edward Stark. We don't have their creds yet. Administrator. Okay, that's it. Then we have another one here on the ASOS side. Okay, so Edward Stark is our admin. Okay, do we have any trust between these domains? Seven Kingdoms local. Trust North Seven Kingdoms local. Trust this one. So we do have some domain trust. Our computers with unusual operating systems usually that doesn't do anything. Find principles with DC sync. Let's try start with the north. Oh, look at that. Here's Winterfell, the north. So Winterfell does have DC sync rights. Then we have a few users here. Vagrandi also does. So now that we, we know that, let's um, type our, 
our first node here is this machine that we're working on uh gets no it's sys info just to see like what is the actual machine the domain is north machine computers castle back let's go and say hey flat down start with castle back and starting from castle back okay so from castle back where which is where we are to get to winterfell how do we do that so there is a session for rob stack right now on the machine that we have and let's take a screenshot of this shortest path let's go to shortest path shortest path from unconstrained delegation system shortest path from kebros user shortest path from owned principles okay we need to mark some principles as owned so we know that we owned this machine here castleback.north so we need to right click and say mark computer is owned now let's do a shortest path from owned principles uh yeah let's do north first from castle castleback all right so we owned this machine here who is a session rob and he's also an admin to winterfell okay so uh, another way to check in bloodhound is we can sh check the shortest path to domains and let's go to the north domain if you zoom out here you notice that we owned this machine there is a user of the session rob stack again and it can lead us to rob stack also has a session on north so if this session has the same token or in this case we can try to see if the ha same hash can be used on both of these so that's what we have here a session for a user and if you check rob stack here rob stack is also an administrator yeah so this path to domain admins if we do that we'll also notice that rob stack is a member of domain admins so let's go and dump rob stack's um hash using our current sessions uh get uid so we're in this NT system as we showed you last time. Load Kiwi. Okay, I already loaded it. And with Kiwi loaded, we can run creds MSV. Let's see if we can dump some MSV creds. And here's Rob Stack's NTLM hash right here. So this 831. So with this hash, we can now see if we can use this permissions that we have shortest path to domain i ah, know actually shortest path to high value targets on this domain here this session here to see what we can find okay so coming back to our terminal we just open another one well first we, we need to see does it rob stack's actual hash work on that machine so we'll come back and say hey crack map exec use smb let's spray everything actually every machine on the domain with rob stacks hash and see where else that hash is valid uh, we already know it's valid on the dot 11 uh, domain controller and here we go here's winter poor uh, winterfell is pond castle black and winterfell so winterfell is what we are after okay so now that we know that it works on winterfell the next command is to use impact we can try impact it to pass the hash i'm doing this because uh, we're trying to save time but i'll explain what it's doing here so it's saying hey, impact it here's a hash you don't need all these zeros but i just want to show the format and put that hash here for rope stack and in this case we want to go to 56.11 this will try to sign in for us as you can see it seems to be working and it's actually trying it, it will try to upload a file and then start the service the problem here i think is our edr is getting in the way because when i come i see rules like this that are getting called like execution from unsigned service and when you look at the service na uh, name is this high value values here so it's actually detecting it and it fails so i don't know if it's stopping it or if it's just bad but you can try and you notice that it will just time out with uh, PS exec. So I say, hey, um, 
Next, we can try evil win RM. So we can say evil win RM. Let's go to 191.68.56.11. User is rope stack and the hash. And if this works, we actually get a PowerShell session like this one. So who am I? Slash priv. This should show us that, hey, we are in it actually as a administrator for the machine. So CDC users administrator. CDC users. There. Let's see other users here. We have John Snow and Edad and Brandon. We also have administrator. So the administrator there. As you can see, we are already here. And this is a new machine called Winterfell. So we have successfully started with a low priv user on a different machine, became a system. We dumped all the hashes from that other machine, uh, dot 22. We found out that there was a session for Robstack and that user also had a session on another machine. We grabbed their hash. We use if WinRM to pass the same hash. And now we have laterally moved to a different machine. So I hope you find value in this. In our next video, we'll enumerate this machine again, dump the hashes to see if we can find the hashes for these other users here and rerun our Bloodhound and see if we can actually move from this domain into the next domain. So thank you very much for being here. If you like this, remember to like, subscribe and share my video with others. Otherwise, let me know in the comments if there's something else we could have done that would have been fun. And thank you for your time.